Hello, this is Barry Coons from Computer World. In this short video we're going to have a quick look at Yammer and help you understand how to make the most of it when you're first onboarding. We're going to go through a variety of subjects that aims to get you up to speed as quickly as possible and get the most out of using Yammer for your company to help improve interaction and improve uh, the sharing of information uh, inside your business. Without any further ado, we're going to switch to the main Yammer console. From here, we're going to have logged into yammer.com. We're going to have subscribed using the relevant method that have been shared by your company. And we're now going to have a look at what we want to do from this point. The first element I'd recommend you have a look at is your network usage policy. This is the policy that's been set out by your business that sets the terms and conditions by which you will abide by while using Yammer. The important thing to remember is whilst it is a social network, it is a corporate or work social network. So make sure that anything you're posting is, uh, is contents that you would feel happy to share in the office. This isn't your personal Facebook or Twitter account, this is a work related tool. Once you've fully read that, you should be good to go to get started with Yammer. What we're going to do from here is we're going to start by configuring your profile. Select the settings icon down in the bottom left and then choose profile from the top. From here, choose edit profile. The profile is very self-explanatory, but it's really important to make sure you take the time to configure your profile to make sure it represents yourself. This is a great place for your colleagues to look up a little bit more about you, to understand a bit about you, and also for new starters to understand the people they're working with and people they may have synergies with when they've just joined the business. One of the most important aspects is making sure you upload a profile picture, a photograph of yourself. This just means that your colleagues will know who they're interacting with straight away and it will really help new starters get to know the people in the business. Now that we've created our profile, we've filled in the relevant information, we should start having a look at the groups that are available to us as a company. So I'm going to save my profile and we're going to go and have a look at the groups. On the left here, we can see a number of groups that I've decided to join when I've signed up to Yammer. There are also other groups available that I can choose by going browse groups on the left. These are groups that have already been set up by our company administrators or by our colleagues. From here, we can choose to join them simply by clicking join. In Computer World, we've created a group called Weekly Goals. This is going to be used by our employees to share their goals for the week. This is a really thing, a good thing to do to help, in, uh, involve, to help encourage interaction inside the business. If you're sharing your goals and somebody else in the business sees it and can help you with that, it's going to help you be able to achieve those goals even easier and then choose, in, improve levels of communication inside the business. If there isn't a group that appeals to you or is the right place for you to post your messages, anybody inside Yammer can create their own groups. You will get one or two options depending on how it's been configured, but the majority of times you're going to choose to create an internal group. An internal group is a space where you are going to collaborate with others inside of your business, not external parties. From here, we simply name the group we can choose to add people to it. Maybe these are our teammates, our team colleagues, and we can either make it public or private. If it's public, it means anybody inside your company is able to view it. If it's private, it means only those that you've invited uh, are able to see the contents. We really want to make as many groups as possible public because this improves interaction and it means people, even people outside of your group feel like they can contribute and see what's going on. We're gonna go ahead and create our public group called Test Group. Because I've created the group and I've not been invited to anyone, the first thing we're going to see is a notification to invite people. It's going to get very lonely inviting, uh, talking to ourselves. From here, I can see, simply type the names of our colleagues and add them to the group. We can now see that Megan Warren has joined our group. From here, we're able to share updates very easily by simply typing in the box at the top. We are also able to include others by using the at symbol and starting to type the person's name. It's really good to be using uh, other people in the post and interacting with them. It notifies them, as you can see down the bottom, that they've been mentioned in the post. So it will alert them that you want them to respond or get involved in the conversation. We're also able to change which groups we want to post this in. So if I didn't want to post it in the test group and I wanted to post it elsewhere, we could do that from this point. We're also able to add topics. 
At Computer World, we're using a topic to celebrate when we have uh, won an engagement with a customer. This really helps everyone get uh, buy into the success that may be there inside the business. We're using a, a, a topic called win that it, people then are able to uh, follow to see when uh, various different elements of our business are being successful. You can create these topics for whatever you want. In a technical company, you might choose to create a Microsoft topic. And if you had a particular interest in Microsoft technology, you could then follow the uh, Microsoft uh, topic that's been created. If I create, if I click this post, we can then see this post has been created. I can choose to reply and so can others. We can also see the topic win has been selected uh, as the topic for this. If I click the win topic, what I'm able to see from here is all the other um, posts throughout all the different Yammer groups that have uh, the win topic on it. So from here, I can choose to follow that individual topic. So I get notifications if anyone else does that. I can also see who else is following the win topic and who is the top contributor with that topic as well. Once we've created some groups and subscribed to some groups, it's really important that we tune our notifications to make sure we're getting alerted about what's important to us. Not too much less and not, uh, not, not too less and not too much. We're going to choose the settings icon and again choose settings from the menu. From here, we're going to look for the notifications option, which we can find down to the bottom of the list in the middle. Under notifications, we've got a real granular level of settings underneath the uh, Yammer site that you're using. So we can see under Computer World here, I can choose that when I want to see a digest of all the information that's happened that's important to me on Yammer, never dailies or weeklies. I can choose when I want to be emailed and which groups do I want to follow activity for from the menu. Once I've made those selections, I simply click Save. Like other social media networks, you're also able to follow members on the network. I'm just going to the home page now and what I can easily do is see a list of members that have been contributing or joining our Yammer uh, in this case. I can see Joe is on the list there. If I chose to follow Joe, I can either choose follow from uh, the pop-up or I can click Joe's profile to see a little bit more and I can then choose follow in the top right to follow all of the messages, all the contributions Yammer is, uh, Joe is putting onto our Yammer network. It is important that you're only following people that are relevant to you or you want to be hearing from. If you end up following everyone in your company, you're going to end up bombarded with information and it's really not going to work well for you. Once you, you've got going, you're following some people, you've created some groups, maybe you've introduced yourself on the All Company profile, it would be useful to make sure you can keep up to date when you're on the road, at home, or be notified on your desktop with what's going on. If we collect, select the three dots in the top left, we can choose the apps uh, section. We're taken to an application store where you can download applications that are going to help you use Yammer, or if your business is selected, add features to your Yammer community. We can see on the right hand side here that we've got an iPhone client, an Android client, as well as an iPad and a Windows client to notify you about what's going on or keep, uh, allow you to keep up to date on the move. The Yammer Now client is a uh, real-time communication tool, an instant messaging tool that allows you to talk directly to your colleagues inside of Yammer. When using Yammer and reading, uh, reading posts that are being put out there by your colleagues, it's important to make sure they don't feel like they're talking to themselves. So if you're seeing something get posted, either make sure that you're liking a post or you're replying say, uh, with something relevant. This really helps the conversation um, get going. There's also a search facility available for you in the top left where you can search across the whole of Yammer to find out what's going on. You can search for any subject and from there you'll get uh, the input for where that subject may exist across the whole of Yammer. I've searched for the word castle here and what we can see is a post has been brought back where we're talking about in our cycling group who wants to come up and join us at a cycling meet that we're going to at Castle Coon Race Circuit. If there is a subject that is um, particularly useful for you or there's something that you want to make sure you're being notified by, you can choose the more options and choose to follow individual conversations. That will ensure that you're kept up to date. 
when coming back to Yammer after uh, being uh, offline for several hours, use the inbox facility to understand more about what you've missed in that time. The inbox in Yammer is a lot more than just private messages. It highlights everything that is important to you, every message from people that you've decided to follow and the groups that you're in. So it's a really good place to come to in the morning to see what's going on and get the most out of using Yammer. So I highly recommend using the inbox functionality. The final element I wanted to show you was the ability to create notes and files. If I come into the marketing group, we can see we get two options at the top. We've got files and we've got notes. Under files, you're able to save files that may be useful to others. Understand how your company wants you to share and utilize files. We don't suggest that this is a, a final place for sharing all your company documents. This is a good place to be sharing files whilst you're working on them, once you're making changes and whilst you're discussing them. Sim similarly, with notes, we're able to create notes with others uh, contributing at the same time. If I have a look at the branding guidelines, what we can see here is uh, Computer World is currently working on uh, a rebrand. Myself and my colleague Megan are currently working on a document together that is going to be published to the business. What we can see here is a live view of that document that's being updated. All of my updates are being highlighted in green and all of Megan's updates are currently being highlighted in peach. From here we can both be working on this document at the same time. This is great for creating real-time uh, minutes inside of meetings uh, with, with others of your colleagues or working on strategy documents where many of you want to be contributing at once. Once you're happy with the contents of the document and you want to share it with the rest of your company, simply click publish at the bottom. If you're not re ready to share it with the company, you can just exit away. It will auto save what is going on. Thank you very much for watching this short video. Uh, hopefully in, in the time you've spent watching it, you've been able to get a good understanding on how to get started with Yammer and you can then start exploring a little bit more in your own time. Thank you.